good morning all of you i hope everyone has mark present in chat new joinees please write present so i'm going to lock now yagnik please uh, mark present in chat many of you have not written present ma'am in chat okay so yesterday we were on accounting period and i have explained you that what is accounting period concept it refers the span of time at the end of the financial statement of an enterprises are to be prepared means on what day or till what duration we need to consider the uh, economic transactions and recorded of this transaction in books and finally on what which date we have to prepare profit and loss account and balance sheet of the firm so that duration we have uh, from the beginning of the year till the end of the year is known as accounting period it can be whatever months we decide according to the rules as i told you we generally follow 12 months that is uh, 1st april to 31st march but some situations may have that you may have to extend or reduce the financial year it depends on the firm and again it, because it is a sole proprietorship you have less number of restrictions but if it is a joint stock company then or partnership you have the govern those uh, uh, bodies like gaps accounting standards and sebi and all sebi means stock exchange uh, board of india so such bodies are like uh, restricting your um, way of preparing the financial statements or and uh, way of pre uh, preparing or recording the books of accounts so i gave you an example that as we see just now the situation is related affected with coronavirus and the week or two weeks before government decided that financial year will be extended to june 30th so that means we may have 15 months this time so let's see now still it's like uh, the news keep on changing so i'll just read this second line now financial statement of an enterprise are prepared 
to know whether it has earned profit or loss during the direct, during that period and what exactly is the position of its assets and liabilities at the end of the period so the, this financial statement we generally make to know whether we have earned profit or incurred loss so which statement that statement is profit and loss statement and the position of assets and liabilities at the end of the year is derived from balance sheet such information is required by different users users already have explained you who are the users internal and external users as various various financial decisions are to be taken according to this uh, information at regular intervals the financial trans uh, financial statements are prepared normally after a period of one year so that timely information is made available to the users however in a case of certain situation preparation of interim financial statement becomes necessary now interim means in between somewhere in the financial year uh, so like examples you have the re retirement of the partner the accounting uh, period can be different from the 12 months and one more example i have written so this is about partnership which is not in this year like partnership if the uh, partner wants to leave in between somewhere he don't want to complete the financial year so what happens all the calculation and all the statements are to be prepared in between so whenever he is leaving we have to make all the statements so again this is a uh, situation special situation when the months or when the uh, time span of preparing the financial statements can be changed so this is one of your concept accounting period concept now another is full disclosure full disclosure word itself shows that something is to be disclosed completely whatever you have whatever knowledge you have or whatever the facts are you have to disclose truly fairly to the uh, users you cannot hide any information uh, to be given to the users so the principle of full disclosure requires that all the material and relevant fact concerning financial performance of an enterprise must be fully and completely disclosed in the financial statements and their accompanying footnotes as i told you that this uh, principle ask you that all the materials materials means informations and all the relevant facts of which are related with the financial performance of your business must be disclosed completely fairly truly to the uh, audiences or i mean to the users who are going to be whose decision is depending on your information and uh, it should be disclosed in financial statement and also some put notes you have later on you know some notes you put uh, other than balance sheet and other than profit and loss so in these notes also there should be a true picture true information given this is to enable the users to make correct assessment about about the profitability and financial soundness of the enterprise and help them to take informed decision so what i just now told you that this information helps them to uh, make the correct assessment make the correct decisions regarding the profitability and financial soundness of the business and then they'll uh, decide according to this information and what steps are to be taken to ensure proper disclosure of material accounting information the indian companies act now this is the indian companies act act which will be is one of the body which is helping or which is guiding the joint stock companies and companies or sometimes even the partnerships so for all this to disclose correct information the indian companies act 1956 has provided a format for preparation of profit and loss and balance sheet of the company which needs to be compulsory adhered to for the preparation of this statement compulsory compulsory adhered means it has to be followed whatever is given in the rules by companies act it should be maintained what like uh, where or uh, these terms are to be recorded in one which side it is to be recorded what are to be what are the deduction to be given means all the process which we are going to study 
later on in the chapters that you have to the accountant has to compulsory follow in order to make the profit and loss account and balance sheet the regulatory bodies see i told you the regulatory bodies like sebi sebi as i told you stock exchange board of india also mandates makes it compulsory to show the complete disclosures to be made by the companies to give a true and fair view of profitability and the state of affair so they are also making it mandatory for the companies that they has to they have to show a uh, true picture of whatever uh, profit they are earning or loss and what are the assets and liabilities state, uh, state of affairs means where what is the financial position assets and liabilities of the business so that they have to show it very fairly now another concept that is cost concept or say historical concept okay before that i want to, that uh, to know uh, are you able to understand and are you able to listen, hear me what i am explaining just a hand raise yeah nice okay good okay so i am going back uh, cost concept or historical concept historical cost concept now cost means the value of any uh, com any item or any raw material you are buying in order to manufacture the goods or the products of your business so that cost generally we consider as the, uh, the what is the cost so we say that anything we are buying the value of what we are buying is the cost and historical cost historical cost means uh, the day when you bought the particular item whatever the price was uh, whatever the value that item was possessing was having will be the cost of that particular item and it will remain same as it is from the first day till the whatever day you are in the books of accounts that means once you have bought a certain item say if i say it's not only the raw material it's not only the goods it's everything all the assets you are buying or uh, whatever the value if suppose you have investment you have made some investment so again the investment should be same at whatever you have uh, bought it or whatever money you have invested suppose you have bought a building or say you have bought a machine the machine cost is say 5 lakhs so the day you have bought it was 5 lakhs later on it may increase or it may decrease then uh, as the days pass but still you have to show the same price in the books of accounts other than depreciation other than the as i explained you yesterday what is what is depreciation it is a natural way of like uh, due to the wear and tear and due to the usage of that machine some uh, the quantity deteriorates and the value of that machine also decreases but if you see that particular machine what is the price in the market it may change lesser or more suppose i brought a as if i say in the like a personal use at you are not talking about the business if suppose i am buying a television so if it is of say 40000 i have bought it today of 40000 and uh, maybe now the demand has increased and they are decreasing the price outside so the price of television has gone down till 35000 or maybe 30000 but now you are not going to change in your books of account that the uh, television cost is 30000 instead of 40000 why because the day when you have purchased was 40000 and you have to show same value you cannot change your values according to the market price whatever it is going up and down now why we cannot do this one of the reason again will be there in the cost uh, later on in another concept but still i'll uh, just now explain you you uh, i i explain you the term voucher if you remember the voucher means it was a written document or written evidence uh, related with any transaction which you are going to uh, post or which you are going to record in the books of account 
so this voucher is a receipt a written document so suppose when you are buying a machine of say 40000 so that document that receipt has to be filed along supporting with this transaction now when you support this voucher of 40000 and if you record later on that the value has been 30000 so it is not matching your uh, whatever you have recorded in the books and with the receipt or with the voucher it's uh, contradict with the amount so that is not again showing a true picture that's the reason we have to be stuck to the price of whatever uh, asset we have bought or any other resources we have bought on that day whatever the value was you have to put that value only throughout the life of that particular item now i'll read it and the cons the cost concept requires that all assets are to be recorded in the books of accounts at their purchase price which includes cost of acquisition transportation installation and making the asset ready to use now this means like uh, only buying the suppose you went and you bought the goods of say 10 30000 but till you reach it to the your factory or to you reach it to your business unit there are other expenses uh, and if it is a fixed asset you have to keep this all expenses adding into the cost of the particular fixed asset so if i am buying a 5 lakhs ka machine and then in between i am paying 1000 rupees as transportation and i am paying 4000 as installation so now it becomes uh, if it was 30 then 30 plus 1 plus 4 means now the cost of fixed asset has become 35 so you have to consider it as 35000 showing all the vouchers supporting this all the three trans, uh, transaction buying of machine transportation and installation all these three will be there supported with the uh, vouchers and you are going to write 35000 till the end of the life of that machine or that fixed asset however asset is systematically reduced in value by charging depreciation as i told you that depreciation will be obviously charged according to our method whatever we have adopted but other than that you cannot show the decrease in value of your fixed asset adoption of historical cost brings in objectivity in recording as the cost acquisition is easily verifiable from the purchase of documents as i told you why this concept is followed because to keep in con uh, to keep ourselves uh, thorough or uh, our ourselves evident with that particular document which we have which we have during this transaction whenever we have bought the particular thing the market value basis on the other hand is not reliable as the value of assets may change from time to time now the market value may change as i told you it can the price may increase or price may decrease making the comparison between one period to another however and an important limitation of historical cost basis is that it does not show the true true worth of business and may lead to hidden profits now one of the disadvantage of this uh, concept is that as you know due to the inflation inflation means um, in hindi generally we call it as tezi market mein tezi aayi hai we say and when it comes so like about inflation many uh, products their prices keep on increasing and if the prices are increasing then assets price also will increase and but still if you are showing them at lower price in your books so obviously there is a profit but which is not declared as you are showing it on the old values this is uh, what it means hidden profits there are profits but they are hidden because you are showing them at lower cost during the period of rising prices the market value or the cost at which the assets can be replaced are higher than the value at which these are shown in the books leading to hidden profit this is what just now i have explained so what is the cost concept or the other name is historical concept we have completed dual aspect concept someone has marked the line please undo this it's spoiling the ppt thank you okay dual aspect concept dual aspect means now this is very much important part 
in our accounts generally we have two effects minimum two effects there can be more for every transactions as you i have explained you debit and credit or uh, there is an increase and decrease at the uh, same time so uh, i'll explain you with an example but just now i want to say that accounts is mainly depend the recording of the books of account has a the most important rule that every transaction has minimum two effects so how that i'll explain you that suppose a person has started a business with the amount with a capital of say here it is given 5 lakhs in example 5 lakhs it means now how will be there two effects so one effect is the person has bought the money in cash that means cash is increasing 5 lakhs and cash is your asset so asset is increasing and same time this cash what he has brought is the investment in the business to start the business that means it is the capital i have explained you the first term what is capital so capital so amount whatever is brought in the business to start the business is capital so at the same time capital is also increasing and this capital is liability so now what's happening when assets are increasing here capital is also increasing so two effects you cannot say that when a person has brought the amount to start a business there will be only one effect no cash is also increasing and capital is also increasing it's not that always it will be increase in increase only there are some rules which we will learn sometimes one of the um, asset or liability or uh, one of the term may be increasing but other may be decreasing or sometimes it both of them will be decreasing so another uh, another example i may give you before that i'll read this this concept concept states that every transaction has a dual or two fold effect and should be recorded at two places in other words at least two accounts will be involved in recording the transaction a debit and a credit of equal amount both should be same amount for example jay started the business with 5 lakh and the two effects are one is cash will be increasing and asset will be increasing and similarly the owner's equity or capital will also increase by the same amount duality principle is commonly expressed in the term of fundamental accounting equation which is assets is equals to assets are equals to liabilities and capital this is a very important equation which will help you in next chapter also and even the balance sheet which we make is generally according to this formula one side you will have asset one side you have liability plus capital now capital is also a liability as i told you earlier that separate entity concept even the capital we assume that there are two people one is business and one is the owner so when the person owner brings the capital we assume that the firm has borrowed the amount from the owner that's the reason the firm has to pay back the amount later on whenever the business is going to wind up so capital is also a liability but just now we show it under separate heading that liability and capital so this uh, equation is very much important one more example i was uh, going to give you that suppose i am by the owner is buying the goods on credit so which two effects will be considered if a person if a business buys good on credit so two uh, accounts takes place that is purchase i told you when you buy goods to resell them it is a activity it is a action of uh, purchases so one purchases will increase and another because you are not paying them on cash you are uh, going to buy the goods on credit your one term has increased that is creditors so suppose if uh, uh, we are buying it from hanuman enterprises so you are going to show as purchases increase and hanuman enterprise under the name of creditors has increased so both of them has increased suppose the day after two months you are going to pay the cash to this hanuman enterprises so you are paying them now which two transactions are there which two effects will be there first of all cash you are paying that means cash is decreasing from your firm so cash is decreasing 
and you are paying to the creditors so your due has also decreased you are now no uh, you are not owing now once you pay him later on he cannot demand the money so again the creditors are decreasing so two effects will be cash has decreased and creditors have decreased so this way we will study in the next chapter the whole chapter is about this accounting equation which will be a numerical chapter and then you will come all the transaction will come to know that where is the increase and where is the decrease okay next concept the revenue recognition or revenue realization now what happens as i have given again same example i can take that i am buying the goods the business is buying the goods from a creditor uh, creditor on credit basis so suppose if i am buying it today 16th of april and uh, i am going to pay in the october so we have to show the transaction on which day the day we have bought the date the transaction took place whether we pay money or whether we don't pay money it is not that i am going to pay on 1st october and i am going to write in the books on 1st october that is the wrong way you have to show your recording on the day which the transaction took place whether the money was paid or whether the money was not paid same thing when you buy uh, this was of buying when you sell it suppose i sold goods to a debtor to a customer but he is not going to pay me the money today so same thing i will consider my sales on today's date of uh, 16th of april i will not write it on the future date or 1st october no you have to record the transaction on that particular day on which the transaction has taken place on which the right to receive or right to uh, right to receive or the duty to pay has occurred that day will be considered this concepts the revenue recognition or revenue realization shows this so i'm reading the concept of revenue recognition requires that the revenue for a business business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized now this is because it is talking about revenue it is not talking about expenses so just now it is about income income means whenever we are entitled to receive something we are selling something and we are entitled to receive something suppose commission can also be there if a uh, uh, i am acting as a, like um, or i am helping uh, suppose a person is helping the business to um, increase his sales or he is taking the guarantee that i will uh, sell this many products so he gets some commission so firm can also do this work so if firm is receiving certain amount percentage of commission so if he is uh, selling the goods on today's date so he, or to this year then he should get the commission on that particular day only it is not that after the financial statements are made and later on we will discuss or on the day uh, whatever the cash has been received on that day you will show it is wrong method so requires that the revenue for the business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is re realized revenue is assumed to be realized now what is realized so revenue is assumed to be realized when a legal right to receive it arises that is the point of time when goods have been sold or services have been rendered so on that day only you are uh, entitled to get the money of whatever goods you have sold or whatever services you have provided credit sales are treated as revenue on the day when sales are made and not when the money is received by the buyer for example now example is this as i told you that if it was a, a month of march and the amount you are going to receive is on april april will be taken into even if received in april march will be only the amount to be considered march will be only the month to be considered to show that the amount has been received in the month of march and not in the month of april any doubt kids no doubt can show a thumb raise you can speak anyone if you have doubt you can just interrupt politely you can say ma'am i have a doubt and if you don't then it's okay 
Nimansha, you, you have doubt? Okay, so next slide, matching concept. Again, this is uh, related with dual concept, as I told you that there are two effects and it is similar to that. And again, second most important part of your uh, financial, preparing of financial records or uh, showing the transaction in book is matching concept. It should be, it should always match. Now what we have to match is generally we always match the expenses with the income. Then only you will be able to find out the profit. As initial stage, if you see when uh, I started this chapter for one, I told you that how we get the profit. In lower classes also, you were uh, asked to find out the profit. So what you used to do? You used to compare the selling price and cost price. And the difference was profit or loss. So same thing, what we do? We try, we keep on feeding the transactions. If it is loss on loss side, if it is profit on profit side, if it is expense on expense side, if it is income, then on income side. And at the end of the year, what we do, we calculate the both of both the sides of the profit and loss account and uh, means expenses and losses. We uh, add together and income and um, profits or gains you add together and then this we match we match means we compare them and we find a difference and from that difference you come to know whether it is a profit or whether it is a loss so this is what we say it as a matching concept that means all the 